Welcome back everyone to the second part of my series on using Blender for concept art. My name is David Arroyo and in this video we're going to be discussing how I use characters and props in Blender and then design them in Procreate. Could have been Photoshop, could have been any other uh, software to paint with, but in this case I'm going to be using uh, Procreate. Right, so I'm gonna show you guys five examples, okay, so of props, of faces, and characters. You'll see them in a second. And then we're gonna go uh, over them one by one and discuss how I uh, used Blender and afterwards the second part, how I did my um, work in Procreate. Right, let's get started and uh, let's have a look. Okay, so these are the five examples that we will be looking at today. Um, I have done them in different art styles, which will be fun for you guys to see because then you can have a look at how these art styles are approached. Uh, we will be starting off with the bus on the left. We'll look at a few headshots and then also full body and an environment um, combining with what we saw in the last video. So let's start with the bus. Uh, this is with advertisement on the side. It's like a screen, but that screen also goes away and then you can see uh, a little bit what the people are going inside. It's like an automated bus. Here you can see the blender file and I suggest that we just go into blender and have a look uh, how that was done. Okay, so this is the Blender file with the bus uh, or automated bus, as you can see here. It's actually quite a simple, like, object. It's, again, low poly because it doesn't really need to be very complicated. If I were to turn on the lights, you can see, so, you know, I added some lights here and there. And let's press zero, a camera. You know, this is a nice shot that you can uh, use for promotional shots and stuff like that. Now, the way I do it uh, for exporting, it's actually quite simple. Um, I take the side view, the front view, and I just export them. Of course, I put my camera in a nice position first. So for example, something like this. Um, let's see, yeah, something like this will do. And then again, I go to view and viewport render image. There you go, and this you export, and you bring it into something like Photoshop, and you can stitch this one and this one together, and that's it. So you don't have to use, uh, move the camera, you just do this, and then that's it. So yeah, what do you say we go into Procreate and see how the concept piece was uh, finalized? Okay, so the very first thing with this particular drawing was the line art. Uh, because of details now I used a mirror function in procreate like a symmetry this you can do in your uh, you know assisted guides and as you can see it goes quite quickly I mean once you have your lines in I didn't do any pencils just uh, straight to inking uh, I did some colors the colors were literally just dropping so color dropping in procreate is super easy uh, if you have your line art as reference layer and then adding details, as you can see, lighting, shadows, some textures here and there to give it a little bit of detail. This part was done so that you could see some advertisement on the outside when the bus was maybe driving or stuff like that. It's an automated bus, so you know, it can pretty much do a whole bunch of stuff. And then here you have the example without it. And that's it. That's the bus. Okay, so that was uh, how the bus was done in Procreate. I hope you liked it. Now, I have a little interesting point that I want to show you first. So I'm going to position the camera the right way. I'm going to add lighting and I'm going to show you what else you could have done with this bus if you had additional time. Uh, you could, for example, add a scenery in the background like I did here. And that scenery is very simple. It is basically just you know, some very basic shapes, nothing too fancy, but it gives you everything that you need in order to get the shot that you want. So obviously they're all strategically placed, the camera's strategically placed, that makes it interesting. But you can go further. If you're really making a concept art piece, you might want to add some cool characters to go with it. So that I did as well. I post some characters, they're rigged, they have all the stuff. And of course, why would we not give them some real guns to go with that? And this is something, for example, that you can also then, again, here's the camera, you can put it at any 
position how you want it obviously you could have shot it from there you could have shot it from here uh, it could have gone any other way or you could have done a shot from the side anything goes now the interesting part here of course is again this also you can do a viewport render image it goes super fast as you can see and here you go this you export and you work with it now that we're talking about characters maybe it's a good time to start showing you how i got these characters to look the way that they do and what setup i have in place to make that happen okay so what you're looking at here is basically a 3d model that i created myself so i modeled it uh, and added some rigging and all that stuff it's quite basic it's low poly it's nothing too fancy but i've created this in order to have some type of template that i can work with so if i were to show the armature or the rig uh here you go see it's uh, active and i have different poses set up for it now, I'm quickly gonna uh, hide this for a second. Uh, what is interesting about this is that once this is uh, built, again, you can always look from the different sides to export if you have to, uh, to do any concept art, draw over it and all that stuff. But what makes it interesting is that you can modify the poses as you've seen here. Okay, so that's one of them. Um, I can also have him aim aiming a handgun. So the poses are on this side, uh, but here you have him aiming a handgun, for example. Now you might be wondering, where is the gun? Well, I have special props that go with it. So when I need the gun, I just pop in the gun and there you go. And I can zoom in and, you know, if I need a shot like this or I need a shot like that or, you know, whatever I need, I can pose him and I can export it. And that's the cool thing. Uh, same with um, a different weapon. So let's remove the handgun, do the assault rifle, for example. Now he's holding a assault rifle in a different pose. Where's the assault rifle? Well, we can pop him in. Also, all these things have been modeled by me. Um, the thing is, you can get these type of models online. They do exist. Um, then you don't have to do all the modeling, but you know, and obviously it's not perfect. Okay. There's some, you know, weight painting that wasn't done perfectly here, but again, it's not really necessary. I mean, his neck is kind of broken here, but it doesn't matter. I mean, it's quickly, it's for concept art. It's just to draw over it. That's all it is. As long as the pose adds up, uh, that is really important. Now, this is exactly how I got these characters placed uh, with the bus. I imported them with their items, you know, like the assault rifles or the handguns or whatever they were holding, and that was it. Um, but I have many different um, kind of poses, like for example, a curled up sitting, so he's just sitting down on a bench, for example, this is where he's relaxed, uh, you know, and it keeps going and going. This is driving a car, and depending on what I have, you know, here is taking cover with a gun. I think this is the one I used for um, the bus scene with the guy. Uh, but you can also exchange it, by the way. You can say, okay, I don't want him to hold him. I want to hold the assault rifle, for example, instead. Um, you wouldn't really do this with this uh, pose, but it's possible. Just like, for example, he could be aiming a assault rifle instead. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you choose what item you put in his hands. Obviously, you have to set it up that way. But the cool thing is that if I move his, um, say for example, I quickly go into pose mode and I want to change the position of where his hand would be. See, I mean, you can change that um, at any point in time. You can move it, whatever works. I mean, it looks funny, but it's just so that you know you can do whatever you want and create a new pose. So that is quite interesting. Uh, based on all of this, uh, you have all kinds of stuff, like for example, a battle stance. This is a battle stance, which was made for a completely different uh, scenario. But here it kind of looks like he's peeking through a door maybe, holding a gun, you know, like uh, in a third person shooter, uh, that would be a good pose. Now, this pose was not designed for that though. This pose was designed for a shield here and a sword in this hand. And then you get a battle stance. Um, the cool thing, and this is really the fun thing, is that all these poses, I can export all these things that I set up here. I can export into, for
for example, uh, where is it? Ro open recent. Let's discard the changes and I can open it here, for example. I mean, these are all stands that come from the mail. So for example, if I were to take the battle stance, there you go. It's the exact same stance, but now I have it on the female on this armature, which is the same. I've just modified it a little bit so that it fits. But again, I remove the assault rifle at the shield at the sword. And all of a sudden we're looking at a female uh, stance like this. And if I recall correctly for the bus, she was aiming an assault rifle. Obviously it looks very strange with these. So you'd have to remove the sword, remove the shield and put the assault rifle in place. And there you go. And this is how she got imported into the um, scene with the bus. Now the cool thing, if I were to really go back into the also discard changes here, so here she is, but if I want to change her pose, it's not really a big issue. Let me quickly go to the female rig and let's say, okay, uh, I actually prefer the battle stance on her. Okay, well, I got the battle stance now, and then it is again a different pose. So let me turn on the lighting, it looks really cool. Uh, so that's what I mean. I mean, you could do really a lot of different things. Um, and that's the cool thing about this. Once you have your library in place that you can use it wherever you need to use it, you can import, export, uh, all these things. So I'm going to go back to the battle stands because that's the next example that we're going to look at. So this file like this, uh, I exported it uh, like this. And I also did a turnaround, which was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was here, 180 degrees, and I did it like this as well. So there you go. Let's have a look at how that piece of concept art was finalized in Procreate. Okay, so I'm going to speed this up a lot. So this was done uh, first in pencils. The reason why I did pencils was to, because pencils allows you to, you know, be more rough and you don't have to have very clean lines. Once that was done, I went over with inks. Uh, this is a second layer on top of that. And here it's important because the details are very important for a 3D modeler. If you're going to pass this on to a 3D artist has to model this, in detail that 3d artist is going to want as much detail as possible in the line art so that he or she can really understand uh, the model as good as possible your character and such then obviously the uh, shading the you know uh, the lighting uh, to give it a bit of uh, feel and, and make it a bit more dramatic than just simple uh, flat colors. You can do both, but um, you know, I just like this more. And then I present it like this and uh, there you go. That's how the character is finalized. And here you can also see how I show it in grayscale because I just like these type of things. Right, moving on to the next example. So this is a face design that was based off of a sculpt that I did in Blender. Now, a base sculpt without the hair, obviously. Here you have an example of it. I suggest we go into Blender to have a closer look. Okay, so here is the face that we're talking about. So this was sculpted in about three hours or so. Uh, and I did it with a very simple, uh, let me see if I can show you right here. Let me add a quick cube and then control three, I think I did. And based off of this, just took it into sculpting and started sculpting off of that. And then from there on, you go into Dynatopo or Dynatopo and you know you just start going into details and details but this is the sculpt basically um not extremely detailed you know just the basics um but just enough also that i can work with it um this was also done just for the head i mean i could have done the neck which wouldn't have been that long it would have been quite quickly now of course there are many different ways of doing these type of things uh, you can also start off with for example, if I go back to the male poser, you can also start off with something like this. So you only use a few of these, um, say for example, you take only this part and remove the rest. 
and you basically start sculpting off of that uh, you can obviously increase the um, you know your for example control 2 or whatever uh, you can increase the detailing and then you go off of that it's a choice I like to start off very simple very slow with not too much uh, polygons because it gives a very nice starting point by the way you could have done that for any pose so you could have posed the character in any way you want it in low poly and then go into sculpting mode and start sculpting all the details the clothing the this the that um really cool and that's that's something that also is useful in um in concept art basically right so going back to the face so uh, again here if i'm not mistaken i also had it lit um from this side yeah and not necessary but can help sometimes when you're creating a face right so what do you say that we go into the uh, procreate file and look at how this uh, face was actually changed into a finalized design okay so here you can see how i have imported the blender file and i've started uh, inking uh, all the details in now you've noticed that in this case i'm not using pencils i'm going straight for ink uh, because it's not as complicated the file you know i'm not going to make that many big changes um, in a face than on a body i have to design much more uh, so i have much more freedom to create the uh, immediate direct lines also you see me here erasing from time to time i've also changed a few things like the position of the eyes and towards the end you will see this again uh, because that's the cool thing about concept art you can do um you know, you can modify based off of your original 3D file. It doesn't have to be perfect. It only has to be perfect later on. If now, based off of this face design, I want to uh, do an actual 3D sculpt with the hair, with everything that I will be using as an actual character, yes, then okay. But in the early stages of concept art, that simple uh, head that I did was just good enough. Here again, you can see how I've changed the head, I've made the measurements, and uh, there you go. That's how I finished this particular piece. It has a bit of a anime style to it and would fit within something like Castlevania from Netflix, for example, just like the character before it. So what do you say we have a look at a completely different art style, but with the same head? So for this approach, I used a painterly approach. Again, it's the exact same head from Blender, just from a different angle. And in this style, it's much more loose. As you can see, there's no line art. It's literally just a painter style. I focused first on the black and white values as they were already given uh, from the Blender file. So I could, you know, I already had the lighting set up. Now you'll see that towards the end, I'll change the lighting anyways. But the, the thing is that it gives you something to work with. Once I had that sorted, uh, I added some final, uh, final little details in black and white. And then I decided to go and start colorizing uh, all this still within uh, Procreate. Um, then towards the end, I started adding this uh, lighting setup that I wanted myself. Also, you, you'll see that the character was completely different from the final uh, result. You know, at the, at the beginning, he had absolutely no hair at the top. Also, he was going to be some type of scientist at the beginning. Uh, and then I started adding hair, uh, as you can see right here, and changing the clothing and all that stuff. That's the cool thing about uh, digital painting, though. You can change things so fast on the fly. And it kind of reminds me a bit of something from Mass Effect, you know, like where you have a conversation with one of the characters. So uh, there you go. This is another way of using a blender face uh, that's sculpted uh, that you can paint over. Okay, and then finally, the very last shot that I wanted to show you, this is where we combine characters and environments. Uh, remember from the previous video, we were looking at how to use Blender and environments. Now here, this time I've added the characters, very similar to what I did with the scene with the bus, and use that lighting setup to create what you are looking at here. So uh, let's dive into Procreate and see how it was done. 
So again, here, as soon as I imported the image, I started uh, with pencils. Now, this time, as you've noticed, it's also a completely different art style from the previous one, also from the anime. As you've noticed, I really like to play around with different art styles. I like art just a lot, and I like to try out new things and learn about new art styles. So. Um, which brings me to the following. So the line art here only serves one purpose. It's for me just to be able to, first of all, design the environment and get the bigger picture in place. But secondly, also for me to be um, to create the uh, silhouettes, basically, of each character. So I basically, uh, for example, for this main character, this guy, uh, he has his own silhouette and I have a alpha channel on it so that I cannot paint outside of it. Uh, and then I create clipping masks in order to create the shadows, the lighting. So they are all separate layers. So the guy is one layer, the girl is a layer. Uh, then the seat, uh, the seating in the front is one layer. Then the seating after that is another layer. Then, you know, so it's done in different phases. Oh, what you're seeing here is me quickly trying out some uh, comic book art style. I got curious and uh, just wanted to see what that looked like. But the advantage of having this done in different layers with clipping masks is that it allows you to control the values and the tones of your um, work really easily. Okay, and you can change around things uh, just by modifying the um, you know the values or or you know the saturation or whatever you need to modify, and that's what ends up creating this art piece. Um, so there you go. This is the finished uh, piece. I hope you like it, and if you want, we could quickly review the other four uh, before moving on. So, to recap, this uh, model, this bus was made in Blender, then I uh, finalized it in Procreate, added some extra features like that it could look like an ad, so that was example number one. Example number two, uh, it was shown how in Blender you can pose your characters to whatever pose you want, then uh, to finalize them here in Procreate again, uh, and added uh, this gray thing, really reminds me of Castlevania, really cool, I really like it. Uh, then here the uh, face uh, again, so how sculpting can be used in Blender to then create, for example, uh, a face as well, again in the anime style, but in that second one, uh, that same face was used to create a more painterly style. So the style doesn't really matter. All that matters is just how you use your items in Blender. And finally, the last example, showcases how you can use Blender to add environments and characters, put them all together to create that. Now, if you missed the previous video, that's where I did environments only. And here you can see how the Blender file got also modified within uh, Procreate. I finished the designs, added some colors to it. And the one thing that I didn't show in the previous video is that how these colors can also be used here as a painter uh, background or a foundation to paint further upon. Now, if you have missed this video, don't worry about it. The link is in the info section below. Just click on it and I'll bring you right to it. All right, so that was my process of using Blender for concept art, this time for props and characters. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, if you guys want to learn how to do this stuff, like actually as in a tutorial, let me know in the comment section below. Just leave a comment and then I'll see if I can create a series specifically for this kind of stuff. So this would mean me teaching you literally how to use Blender and, you know, really the basics, only the stuff that you would need in order to do this concept art stuff because Blender is really big. You can do a million things with it, but we can just take it slowly and, you know, just focus on the basics so that the stuff that you just saw, that you can do that too. As usual, if you like this type of content, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys.